Welcome to Capital Preview, a weekly bipartisan discussion with Iowa legislators about the key issues facing our state. Brought to you by Mediacom. Good morning, my name is Bill Peard. I'm the Executive Vice President of uh, the Iowa Cable and Telecommunications Association. This show, Capital Preview, is, is sponsored by Mediacom and brought to you to discuss with our senators and House members uh, issues that are important to Iowans uh, that are at the state capitol now and being reviewed. So our guest this morning is Senator um, Tony Bezignano. Uh, uh, he's a Democrat and he is in District 17, which is South Des Moines and downtown Des Moines. So Senator, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Well, thanks, Bill. I always look forward to our annual, uh, yeah. our annual meeting it's, here. It's good to see you. Um, you're on the Judiciary Committee where a lot of controversial bills are pending. Um, what do you think of the caps on recovery bill that restricts uh, an injury uh, to permanently disabled people to a recovery of only 750000 for non-economic damages? Well, um, you know, there's some bills that uh, you pull out every so often and it's, it's your money raiser. <laughs> and uh, this is the year, I think, that the Republicans decide that tort reform uh, sounds good. Uh, we'll drag that out and we're going to do tort reform. And the sad part about playing games with politics and with people's lives is that uh, there are real people behind this. And when, uh, when you go to CAPS, uh, and in their generous uh, mood last week, they amended it from 250000 to 750000 um, which could be nothing compared to what the damages could be. Uh, for example, an infant um, that, that has harm done uh, through malpractice uh, at birth. Uh, you're looking at a child that uh, per the predictability of their earnings capacity and the consortium and all that is very difficult with infants uh, to predict their future. But we do know one thing, they're going to need lifelong care. And if they need lifelong care, their parents, uh, that's what they're worried about right now, but, but they'll pass on. Uh, it's the fact that that person was harmed and that that person should have damages uh, commensurate with a good standard of safe living. Very good. Um, I'm just going to go uh, kind of some of the important things that um, that you're working on up there and one of them is that you represent the city of Des Moines and Des Moines is one of the three cities that has affordable housing program that an ordinance prohibiting discrimination against uh, uh, persons who receive rent vouchers. Uh, these are bills that would prohibit cities from having such an ordinance which, uh, of course, would include Des Moines as well as Cedar Rapids and Marion. Do you think um, uh, cities should be prohibited from having such ordinances um, and that would protect citizens in affordable housing uh, receiving rent vouchers? Well, again, we've got the Iowa legislature that is trying to do uh, upsurp the local governments. Uh, you know, housing, affordable housing, probably is number one in 90% of cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, to say that uh, vouchers uh, that are given out for people that are struggling, people that need assistance, um, to say that landlords can refuse uh, to rent to those people uh, on vouchers, um, sends all the wrong message for a community. It, it's racist. Um, you know, the, it's people on, on government assistance and, and people uh, tend to think somehow that uh, there's something uh, wrong with them and they're just struggling and to get back on their feet and get back in the game. Uh, but the legislature uh, over the past uh, several years has preempted cities' rights to make those decisions for themselves. Um, there is a, a there is conduct call backfill, which is where the state is going to backfill monies uh, that the cities have lost as a result of property tax uh, reduction that took place when Governor Brand said was in office. 
there's a discussion about eliminating the backfill, uh, which, will which will necessarily result in increasing the property tax on citizens in the cities because of the need to make the loss of those backfill monies. Do you think that's fair that the state um, not fulfill its promise to make the cities whole on that backfill issue? Well, Bill, uh, let's, let's say this, that the state is uh, the only thing consistent about the state paying back uh, local governments for promises made is how inconsistent they are. I, I'm surprised it's taken this long uh, to go after the backfill because, uh, you know, the newness is worn off, the party's mm -hmm. over, uh, you know, there's no uh, bump and thrill bigger than the day you pass a tax cut and you can tell all your friends and neighbors and uh, small businesses just what a great thing you did. Uh, and the state did this uh, about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was probably one of the biggest mistakes that they've made because they cut taxes too dramatically uh, for uh, corporate uh, commercial business and it reclassified uh, multi-family dwellings uh, to residential, and the state has lost millions and, um, and hundreds of millions. And so now um, that's not sexy anymore. We've done that. They've taken the bowels that you could take. And so they're moving on to uh, new prey. And so uh, this backfill, uh, would it surprise me if the state didn't fund it? No, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Uh, then property taxes would have to pick up on the property tax that they gave, took the bowels, and hurt local government services. Um, the governor's trying the same thing in her uh, one cent penny proposal. Uh, she's saying that she's going to take over uh, the property tax cost for mental health, and that's around $80 million today. Uh, but that doesn't promise anything for tomorrow. But at the same time, want to cut the county's uh, mental health levy. So if the state did renege, which they will, it's just a matter of time, uh, or not keep up with, with the cost of living for mental health services, uh, the counties would be uh, hand-strapped and the levy would be low and people wouldn't get mental health services. And so it's just, Another sexy thing that they think when they say they're giving property tax relief that somehow you ought to feel good about it, um, really what, what you ought to feel is, uh, you know, how long is it going to last and what are we going to do to recover uh, the damages when you pull the funding away? That's well said. And it's a, and it's a very real issue. It's a very these, real issue. With these cities that they're kind of stuck, right? Because how are they going to make that up? Well, you know, uh, give, give money to mental health so we right. can improve mental health, right. but don't take away the levy right. uh, or reduce the levy to where it could mean, you know, maybe for 30 to $40 million for Polk County. Yeah. At a time that people are, are demanding that we have better, better mental health services. Right. So yeah. it, it's no, a bait and switch. Um, you know, they'll keep, get your eye on the shiny object over in the corner, <laughs> which is the backfill and still try to pass this, this penny sales tax, which it looks like to me, it's unraveling at, at, at an almost uh, uh, impossible uh, way to put back together this year. Well said, Senator, thank you. Um, there's discussion about allowing uh, felons to regain their right to vote. Um, some legislators want to condition the restoration of a felon's right to vote on making full restitution or other requirements. How do you feel about um, registering a felon's right to vote? Well, being that Iowa is the only state that doesn't do any automatic restitution uh, is very unusual. We are the only state that has to be done one at a time by the governor. And in, 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 pa in the past, governors, uh, Governor Vilsack signed an executive order that gave uh, the rights back after you have done your probation and parole. And now Governor Reynolds has proposed last year uh, the same concept, except it would need to go through constitutional amendment. That's, that's a tedious process. It's, it's two general assemblies and then an election by the people. What we've got is, is a situation, the governor has proposed a very clean constitutional amendment. At the end of your 
of your sentence and your probation parole, uh, you would get your rights reinstored. The Senate has taken a harder position. Last year didn't pass it uh, out, and this year has passed what's like I would call a conditional bill. Um, yeah, I don't think it's appropriate, but uh, what they've done is they've got a bill that restricts some of the people who would get their voting rights back. And, um, and, and it's going after some really bad people. Uh, it's going after people with some type of murder charge, people um, with severe uh, sexual assault, uh, child molestation, uh, gruesome uh, crimes. And those would have to go to the governor one by one. Uh, this bill passed uh, the Senate committee, Judiciary Committee Thursday, now must pass the full Senate and must go over to the House and pass the House or the Senate's not gonna pass the simple constitutional amendment. So what you're gonna have is arguments that we have every day about letting people decide. Uh, it's the Iowans that count uh, we're actually going to go to a constitutional amendment, but at the moment the constitutional amendment passes, we're going to have a list of caveats that are going to be confusing to those who are going to get uh, their, their voting rights in store, uh, restored. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of the problem this year with the constitutional amendment is there's conditions being placed on it by uh, the Senate Republicans. Very good. Um, qu quickly, um Senator Bezignano, uh, you serve on the Commerce Committee, which is one of the major committees uh, at the Capitol, given that, uh, given that Iowa has so many insurance companies located here. What are some of the major issues that have been presented to the Iowa legislator regarding uh, the insurance industry this year? And are there uh, any insurance issues that you would like uh, that would be of direct benefit to um, Iowa citizens? Well, I think, I think the key, and, and, and the industry itself is, is making money. Um, they come for their, uh, their tweaks from year to year through the insurance commission. But I think if we're gonna talk insurance, uh, we still uh, have a serious problem with the uh, privatization of Medicaid um, with our, uh, our managed care uh, organizations. We have, we're in transition to a new director. And this director, Dr. Haya, Kelly Garcia, is uh, young. Um, she's, uh, she's very impressive. Uh, she came at a very bad time, besides the Medicaid disasters that we're suffering. Glenwood also uh, came to the front page. But I think we have uh, a good person uh, nominated by the governor and she sent her first message out, I believe, a month ago by withholding uh, monies owed to the, the managed care companies. But uh, the key problem uh, with health care um, is making sure the people who need it get it and making sure the insurance companies are paying the providers. That's always been a very, very contentious spot. That's what uh, we're counting on Dr. Garcia to do is step in and, and, and get that under control where uh, services provided uh, or services paid for. Oh, very good. Um, I appreciate you being here this morning, Senator. Uh, time has gone fast. Let's go we fast. We had a great discussion. Um, we have some very important issues up there at the legislature that, uh, legislature that you're working on. We appreciate that. Well, thank you. So our guest this morning was Senator uh, Tony Bezignano, uh, Democrat that represents the South Des Moines um, and downtown um, with District 17. We appreciate him being here this morning and sharing his time with us. Um, we appreciate you tuning in and stay tuned for another episode of Capital Preview.